Okay. Next speaker is Joshua Jones from Imperial College uh, London. And uh, the title is, ah, oh, I can see the title is not exactly what I have in my notes. The title is Causal Set Entanglement Entropy Disjoint Regions. All right. Um, thank you for the introduction. So uh, I want to talk about some work that I did in collaboration with uh, Cal Duffy and Yasmin Yazdi at uh, Imperial College London. Um, and it's about the entanglement entropy of um, disjoint regions in causal set theory. So luckily, I am speaking straight after mm -hmm. Bay, so I'll just give the briefest of motivations, um, as you are all now familiar with causal set theory and uh, have a intuition for it, at least slightly. So I'll just get into how we go about calculating entanglement entropy in the causal set theory. Um, and how this entails a truncation scheme, which is necessary to get the area law scalings that are consistent with what we expect in a continuum theorem. I'll then talk about how we extend this to disjoint regions, that is the truncation scheme, and present some results of us using the truncation scheme on disjoint regions. Um, finally, I'll discuss some of the implications of our work. So as you all now know, causal set theory is a formalism that is designed in the pursuit of quantum gravity. And in light of this, entanglement entropy becomes a very natural area of study within causal set theory. Um, of course, no doubt everyone at this talk is interested in entanglement entropy for its own sake, but uh, hopefully by the end of my talk, I will have convinced you that although certain entanglement entropy calculations are very difficult in the continuum, they are far more straightforward in the causal set case. And uh, even if you're not a causal set theorist, this can still be of interest to you. So within causal set theory, we cannot use the conventional von Neumann entropy formula. And that is because there isn't really a notion of data upon the causal set analog of a hyperservice. This is made manifest by the fact that there is no time evolution operator in causal set theory. Because of this, we use an alternative formulation put forward by Raphael Sorkin, where we need to just solve a generalized eigenvalue equation uh, given by equation two. Once we solve this equation in which W is the Y function and I delta is the Pauli Jordan function, we can then use the eigenvalues in this equation um, and put them into equation one to retrieve the entanglement entropy. Now, when Sorkin and Yazdi went about implementing this in a causal set framework, they considered a nested causal interval, which is shown in figure one. That is one small causal diamond within a larger global causal diamond. They actually found that they got a volume law from this entanglement entropy formulation. They found that what they needed to do was truncate the spectrum of the Pauli Jordan function uh, such that they would remove all the eigenfunctions that corresponded to eigenvalues smaller than root n over four pi, n being the number of elements in the causal set. They found that once they actually did this, they retrieved the expected area law scaling, um, which is one of third times the logarithm of a characteristic length of the interval. I should note that throughout this talk, uh, whenever you see x, this is just a characteristic length of the interval in the units of the cutoff. This is merely done for the sake of convenience and uh, it doesn't affect the coefficient in front of the logarithm uh, as this is a uh, universal. In order to understand the action of the truncation scheme and what's actually happening, we need to first turn to the eigenfunction equation of the Pauli-Jordan operator in the continuum. That is 
equation five. Upon solution of equation five, we can actually see that the Pauli Jordan eigenvalues are of the form L squared over n pi. We can translate this into causal set friendly units uh, just by multiplying by rho, which is the causal set density. And the minimum eigenvalue from the continuum, L squared over pi, corresponds to a value of root n over 4 pi in the causal set. Now, because of this, we can understand the action of the truncation scheme. All that we're doing is removing extraneous eigenvalues that have no analog in the continuum. And that is why we need to do this truncation scheme in order to retrieve a continuum corresponding area law. Now that the rationale behind the truncation scheme is clear, I'm just going to briefly go over the entire calculation process that we use in order to calculate the entanglement entropy. So first we just define a causal matrix, which is just the equivalent of an adjacency matrix, uh, which simply tells you if two elements are causally related or not. We construct the Pauli-Jordan function just by subtracting its own transpose. And then we construct the Whiteman function out of the positive eigenspectrum of the Pauli-Jordan matrix. This Wyman function defines a vacuum state, and it actually defines the Sorkin-Johnston vacuum state in particular, which is the de facto vacuum state in causal set theory. It's Minkowski-like for a causal diamond, at least towards the center of the diamond. Once we have this Pauli-Jordan and Wyman function, we can then do the truncation as previously detailed, but we do this for the full Whiteman function and Pauli-Jordan function with the full region's element number. We then go about restricting the Whiteman function and Pauli-Jordan function, and then redo this truncation scheme, but this time with the sub-region's number of elements. Now we have the Whiteman function and Pauli-Jordan function in a form that is ready to be used in the eigenvalue problem, such that we can calculate the entanglement entropy. So now we basically understand the full process, we can see how we need to modify it to take into account disjoint regions. What we need to do is return to the continuum theory and consider the Pauli-Jordan function, but this time for the disjoint intervals, as is shown in figure two. Now we can solve this eigenfunction equation, and actually we get the solutions equation 10 and 11. Um, but what is more important than the exact functional form of these solutions is actually that they are of the form of one single region, one single region's eigenfunction on one of the causal diamonds, whilst they are trivial in the other one. And uh, an example of this is an eigenfunction plotted of the Pauli Jordan operator. And this is generated off of a causal set that we were working with. Now, with a little bit of thought, we can see that actually we can use the same truncation scheme as before, except with a slight modification of n to n over 2. Um, this is only in the identical region case. And actually, we can treat differently sized regions in much the same way, except this time we just need to look at which region the actual eigenfunction has support over and truncate according to the number of elements within that small disjoint region. OK, so now that we understand how to truncate in the disjoint case, I'm going to present some of the results that we got using this disjoint region truncation scheme. Now, here we consider the schematic shown in figure 4, where we have two small subregions that are disjoint in a much larger global diamond. The reason why they're so small is so that we could put them in the middle, where the Sorkin-Johnston vacuum is very Minkowski-like. We retrieve the expected continuum scaling of two-thirds times the logarithm of the characteristic length. And um, after this, we went on to also treat the three-diamond case, which is shown here. This is basically the same. And uh, once again, after we did our calculations, we retrieved the expected scaling, which is just one times the logarithm of the 
character, characteristic length of a subinterval. Now, these results definitely lend credence to the fact that our disjoint truncation scheme is correct, but not only do they indicate that, they indicate that our understanding of the truncation scheme in general is correct. Joshua, uh, have, Joshua you have two minutes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, so this basically brings me to my key point. We now understand how truncation schemes can be generally derived, and we understand how they scale up to disjoint regions. This means that if we can solve the eigenfunction equation for the Pauli Jordan matrix, well, Pauli Jordan function in the continuum case, we can then derive the truncation scheme necessary for the treatment of regions of that shape in the causal set. Not only can we do that, we can treat disjoint regions of that shape in the causal set. I think this is particularly exciting because even if you're not a causal set theorist, you will know that such calculations are very difficult to do analytically in the continuum. And this is a case where the causal set calculations could potentially help to find the analytic solutions by first numerically solving or numerically finding these scalings in the causal set. On top of that, we can even look at the non-universal parts of the entanglement entry shown by the beta in equation 14. And the causal set case also could help with these in a very similar fashion. These bases are very hard to calculate in the continuum case. So as my talk comes to a conclusion, I urge you to uh, check out the paper. Uh, the QR code will take you straight there if you are interested. Um, some of the steps are made clear and uh, are shown in more detail. On top of that, there are some other results, such as Globals in a larger global region, which are in there, not related to disjoint regions, but are nonetheless interesting. And with that, I think I will conclude my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much.